So in this lecture, we're going to be talking about binary conversion. Now, why? Well, if we think about the computer, if we strip it all the way down to the very bare essentials, everything it's only focusing in on is something like this. Well, this is known as a switch. This is a little simplistic uh, electrical engineering 101 uh, diagram, but what's going on here is effectively this is where we have say for example electricity there's my electricity lightning bolt and over here I have no electricity and the reason is because there is nothing touching in between here now inside the computer we regard this as something known as a zero basically there's no power going to it but what happens when this switch connects and we'll say you know what happens if this connection right here has occurred well now all of a sudden that electricity that I had over here that actually gets transferred over to here as well and so what we actually consider this is a one and so now we have the very basic of a computer now that we have just one switch, what happens if we start to expand on this idea? What happens if instead of just one switch, I did two switches? Well, what are the possible states that I can have right now? Well, I can have my first state. I can have both of them being disconnected, zero and zero. But what happens if I have one disconnected and one connected? Well, suddenly I have a second state. I have a zero here and a one here. Well, I can do the exact opposite. What happens if I have the opposite switch connected and then the opposite switch disconnected? In this case, I have a one and a zero, kind of flipped over. And then my last possible state is that I can actually have both of these connected, which in this regard gives me two electric, uh, electrical uh, currents, which means I get a one and a one. So by having two switches, by having two switches, I'm actually able to do two to the power of two possible states four states. One, two, three, four. Well, what happens if I make eight of these? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, we're not going to go over drawing them all out in a way too much time. You guys would skip through it anyway. But what would happen is now I have two to the eighth power possible states. Two to the eight, if you do math, that equates out to 256 possible states, possible combinations of switches, binary. So this is where we start to get the hallmark of all of our binary uh, computation. We start to go, all right, well, since I have 256 possible combinations, that actually starts with zero. And so I can represent any number from zero to 255. I don't do 256 because I've started at zero. Zero still is technically a number. So how do I do the calculation? How do I do something like binary conversion, which is what you're gonna be asked on your homework? Well, let's say for example, I have the binary string 1011010 1. A lot of numbers going on here. Well, my recommendation is not pull out a calculator and start trying to do this math in your head. My recommendation is to draw a rectangle, just a really long rectangle and divide this up into eight separate squares. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Once you've got this rectangle designed up, 
start at the far right corner and put a one. That one is gonna be the basis of everything. That actually allows me to do odd numbers. And so from this one, basically every next square, double the number to the right of it. So this was a one, this is gonna become a two. This double two means this is gonna become a four, double, this becomes an eight, double, this becomes a 16, double, 32, 64, 128. Let me make that eight a little bit more outstanding. Eight. Now you're probably saying to yourself, what about 256, 255, where, where's that? Well, if I were to take all these numbers together and just add them up by themselves, I would actually get 255. If I have none of them, if I don't add any of these numbers up, I get zero. So that should give you a kind of sneak preview idea of what we're going to be doing. We're actually going to say all of a sudden that wherever we see a, a one, that's a number I'm going to add. And anywhere I see a zero, that's a number I don't add, going from left to right on both ends. So in our case, we said we do have a one right here, so we are going to add 128. We skip over 64 because there's a zero there, but there is a one here, so we are going to add 32. We see that right beside it, we're gonna add that 16. And now you see we're gonna skip over eight, four, two, and we're gonna add that one. So now that I've got these numbers applied up, Again, don't pull out the calculator. You know, this is basic math. You guys should know this, you're in college. But I can take these and I can make it easier on myself. You know, I don't like these numbers either. So I, I designed them up in such a way that it makes it easier for me. So suddenly I take a look at this. Well, I, I don't really, I, I call this smart math. Smart math in the sense that it's just, how do I make this easier for myself? one of the things I can do is I can try and make my numbers a little rounded out. So say for example, 128 plus 32. All right, well, what's that? Well, before we get to 120 and 30, let's look at eight and two. So eight and two, just by themselves, that's gonna be 10. And so suddenly I'm now faced with 120 plus 30 plus 10. So over here to the side, 120, 30, 10. That's a little bit easier for me to do addition-wise. I don't have to worry about those zeros anymore. And so suddenly this becomes 160. Well, now that, that collectively has become 160, 160 plus 16 is a little easier. Suddenly that becomes you know, 176. And then one 177. So that's how we can do any type of binary conversion. The one little tidbit I'm gonna give you guys is if you ever see a one here, that last right hand digit, that means it's going to be an odd number. So if you're looking at, say for example, a true false question, if you see that, say for example, is this binary string uh, 176? Well, that's an even number, I have a binary string of an odd number, I automatically know it's false without having to do all this pesky math going on here. So I hope that gives you a little bit of insight on binary conversion.